stand up if you want to. You don't have to.
So we're gonna do we're gonna do I speak Jesus. And it would be great if you sang along because that first part's really quiet. I speak Jesus. That's true, actually. We have an we have announcements. We still do. Is Mickey here? <laughs> Just because the power is out doesn't mean we don't have to. There's Mickey. <laughs> Welcome, Mickey. I have no plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can sit down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mickey. Welcome, Mickey. Welcome, Mickey. Welcome, morning. We, have, we don't have a ton of announcements. Um, Thanksgiving week. Golly, what a blessing. How grateful yeah. we are. Um, the, we do have men's prayer breakfast tomorrow morning. So first thing, 6.30 tomorrow morning here. And then we have, um, the office will be closed on Wednesday. And then, of course, Thanksgiving. Um, and then, I don't know, Susie, are you going to do the kids on Friday night? No, okay. Yeah, so nothing going on on Friday. Um, and then, just to tune in on Friday, December 2nd, we're going to have our women's coffee and conversation. And then we're going to decorate the church afterwards. And then on that Sunday, December 4th, dun, 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 we're going to have catered Christmas lunch, ugly sweater, wear your ugly sweater, and then a white elephant gift. So, that's it. All right, good job. Yeah, so I'll announce the names of the songs before we do them. Normally we don't do that, you know, it interrupts the flow, but it's that kind of day. So if you want to look it up, make sure and take your phone off of Wi-Fi because sometimes the Wi-Fi pretends it's on and then it won't let you. Wi-Fi should be on for the next hour. It should be on. Mm -hmm. So we have Wi-Fi. So Jess, Thank you. do you want to try to do prayers? Are you loud enough to do that? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. All right, great. We're going to pray. So I'd like to just ask, does anybody have any prayer needs this morning? Uh, this is family, right? And so, Jono, what do you got? Uh, Benjamin. He's uh, leaving the day after Thanksgiving. We're driving him out with him to uh, Missouri, and he'll be starting his um, uh, welding career. So he's going to welding school. Praise God. So we'd be pray for Ben. What else? Anybody else? Oh yeah, we got oh, Wayne. For Bryce Dancer. Yeah, we, I definitely um, wanted to lift up Bryce this morning. I had a word. Somebody's got the information. There's somebody out there. Yeah. I just got that word. There's somebody out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we want to be praying for Bryce. He's really been struggling and got a a lot of physical issues going on. Uh, most of you probably know Lainey is, has a very severely broken wrist. She's going to be having surgery on Tuesday. So we'd appreciate your prayers for that. Um, and just she doesn't tolerate any kind of pain meds. And so she's going to have to do this with Tylenol. And so that's going to be a ice and Tylenol. So be praying for that as well. Uh, there's, oh, the Miller family. Uh, John had a heart attack last night. I don't know. Do you know if he's in the house living center? We're not really sure where he's at, but he has a DNR, and so it kind of sounds like they are expecting him. This may be the end for John. So we want to really pray for the Miller family as well. Uh, any others? Because now's a great time. This, Like I said, this is family, right? So... Oh, and I want to introduce you to Mark Darby. Mark, if you stand up for a second. Uh, we're going to be praying for Mark. Mark is going to be taking and starting our junior race team. Okay, he taught. And yeah, we're so excited. And Mark and I worked together for years and years, a long time ago, and we're really excited he's back. Uh, so kind of spread the word that we are starting a, a junior race team. He's going to be putting a parents uh, meeting together. So we're real excited about that. So if you have questions or want to help, get a hold of Mark, okay? All right. Thanks. One more. Sure. About half of Ukraine right now is like this. Doesn't have power. Either. They don't have power. They, some of them don't have water, gas. Yeah. We it's need to keep lifting them terrible up. Terrible situation. I know there was a bad shooting last night in Colorado Springs and five people killed and another 15 injured at a bar and so we just want to be praying for our nation so any others unsaved loved ones unsaved loved ones amen we definitely want to do that ben is, ben is waiting on paperwork uh to be citizen, citizen. Oh, and, and, and like pilot. so
so that he can have his uh, pilot's license. And um, he's ready to take the test. He's ready to do it. He sent me a picture of he and his uh, guinea pig studying for his... Uh, <laughs> Actual <laughs> guinea pig, not like it. No, a real guinea pig. And uh, he's studying for his uh, pilot's license. But he can't do anything with it until these official papers are done. And when Jesse called, it looks impossible. So um, let's just pray that it's not and that God does it in his perfect timing and that Amen. he and the guinea pig can get their uh, pilot's lessons. <laughs> Anyone else? Mindy, you want to lead us? I don't think I'm loud enough today. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's go to the, to the throne of grace this morning. Father, we come to your throne of grace in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Father, you've heard all these different requests. We pray for Bryce. We pray for all of our loved ones, those that are lost, those that maybe have wandered away. We're calling forth those prodigals home, Lord. We pray over sickness and illness, Father. We just break this curse of COVID and the flu and an RSV and all those things that are going on. We pray for the, the families and the people in Colorado Springs of this horrible shooting. We ask you to have mercy upon our nation, Father. We know that we've sinned against you and we've rebelled, but we're, we're crying out for the spirit of conviction and repentance to fall on this nation. Father, we're asking you to turn us back. Help us to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face. To turn from our wicked ways that you can hear our prayers and heal our land. So we just believe for that in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray for all these different needs. Pray for Lainey and all that's going on with her and uh, pray that just your blessing over that. We're just believing for complete healing with no hindrance in that wrist so she can have full use of her right arm. We pray, pray blessings over Ben and his family as he's, he goes off into this new endeavor, Father. Bless him. I just pray that you'll just give him favor with you and with man. I pray that he'll just carry that light of Jesus everywhere he goes. And we just pray uh, blessings and thank you for, for Ben and all he's done for our church. And we just look forward to hearing uh, the reports as he gets involved in his new career. And Father, just all the other prayer requests, uh, we just lift them up. We just pray, Father, that you will just pour out your spirit now upon this church and all this region, Lord. And we just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I know you guys know this song because this has been the song that people have asked me to do over and over and over and over. So we're going to do I Speak Jesus, and I expect you to sing really loud because I'm not very loud on this one. So you guys can stand. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord. kids right now. We want Susie to take them and go upstairs. <coughs> Is my mic on? <laughs> Coming through loud and clear. Well, it is amazing how much we rely on electricity and technology and all of those things, but the exciting thing is, is God, we can worship together just like we are today. And it doesn't require lights and media and sound and all of those things. It just requires us coming together. Where the Lord says, where two or three are gathered, you know, I'll, I'll come and be in your presence. And I always like to encourage people um, because... We can all come to the Lord and pray individually. And God says he will hear our prayers. But when we come together in his name, he says, I'll come and be in your midst. So we're just welcoming you here, Lord, and we're grateful that you're in our midst. So um, 
I really wasn't supposed to be preaching today, so this is the notes that I have from a couple days ago. Uh, I want to encourage you guys, we've been in a series talking about exposing lies that are just commonplace now in our society and in our world, right? And so we've done a bunch of different things, and Ben was going to be doing that as well today. Uh, I want to talk about today one that I think all of us deep down inside really want, our flesh wants to believe this lie that once we become a Christian, then there's no pain, there's no suffering. We should, we should be able to be and treat God like Santa Claus, right? I mean, and we don't, all of us know we're not supposed to do that, right? But our flesh nature, that's really what we want is when things begin to go wrong, when we begin to struggle and stuff, it's so easy to cry out to God and say, why God? Why are, we, why are you doing this? How many are guilty of that? Okay, I mean, we all do in different seasons. Um, and so today we want to, we just want to kind of look at that. I prayed quite a bit about this as I was just kind of starting to prepare this. And Miss Betty always used to teach us the root, like, you know, if fear is the root, then what you'll see is the fruit of that will be jealousy and anger and all these different things. Um, I believe the root of this one, where we're questioning God when things we get into bad times or, or we begin to struggle or, uh, you know, suffer uh, persecution, which most of us really don't. Uh, but I think the root of it actually comes down to unbelief. And I, and I want to kind of try to unpack that a little bit this morning for you. And so I think our flesh wants to declare that we're the king and we want the Lord to do what we ask him to do. How many of you are glad God doesn't answer all of our prayers? <laughs> he may answer them, but he doesn't answer them the way we want him to. And it really, this is an attack on God's, on Jesus' lordship. And it's, it's the flesh nature, right? And so today we want to start off, I want to, I'll be kind of jumping back and forth between my phone and my, <laughs> see, I still have my, <laughs> my little things. John 16, 33 says this. Get down there real quick. I'm going to be in New Living Translation today. Um, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and I'm going to jump up to 31, and he says, Jesus asked, do you finally believe that there's a time coming indeed it's here now when you will be scattered, each one of you going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And I believe that it's really important that Jesus is making this point to the disciples. He's talking to them right before he's going to the cross, right? And he's telling them, you're going to leave me alone, but I'm never going to be alone. And I want to encourage all of us in Christ, in our relationship with Christ, the Father promises I will never leave you or forsake you. And so, actually, I think, um, Wayne, little Wayne, didn't you just tell us that you were talking about being alone this morning, and, and the Lord says, you're not alone. And so, I want to encourage you, when we're going through difficult times, have you ever been at that place where you feel like maybe God has left you? I read Psalms pretty much every night, and, and I, I read the Psalms a lot of times, and, and you can hear their cries, like, why have you forsaken me? we got all this horrible stuff going on. And almost always at the end, they'll turn around, though, and go, but you are faithful. And so Jesus is encouraging uh, the disciples that he's not going to be alone. And I think that might have been a comfort for them after they did abandon him. Is I wonder if that word came back to them where it's like, I'm not alone <laughs> because my father is with me. Verse 33. I told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So just to tear down the lie that we're not going to, everything's going to be perfect when you become a believer. Uh, I mean, I heard that before I was a Christian. You know, if you'll just become a Christian, everything's going to be perfect. Well, sort of. <laughs> so today we just want to kind of dive into that um, this series has kind of been loosely based in Hebrews and so I want to go over to Hebrews chapter 10 
And we're going to just sort of look at this real quick. Down in verse 32. I'm almost there. There we go. Verse 32, Hebrews is talking about, um, the writer of Hebrews is talking about, let me jump back up to, uh, yeah, I'll stay at 32. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. So the he writer of Hebrews is reminding the people, remember what it was when you first came to Christ. Can you remember that point where you had that, that divine encounter when it was that first time where you went, okay, you're really real and, and you know, I've been inviting you. I want you to come into my life. Uh, I assume that all of you have that testimony. Not everyone can pinpoint it to an exact time and place. My brother was just sort of a process that he kind of grew into. But remember that time when you know you had that assurance and that hope that, you know what? God is in, he's, he's in control of my life. He is my Lord. So the writer of Hebrews is reminding those people about that. When you first learned about Christ, remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. Sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail. When all you owned, your owned was taken away from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. Let that sink in for a minute. Sometimes we have, we were talking this morning while the power was on. <laughs> um, we were talking about how, I think it was Roxanne was talking about how it's so important when we go through struggles and difficult times and stuff that we remain thankful. Mm -hmm. have, you ever, have you ever been in the midst of a really difficult time and all of a sudden you just, the Holy Spirit will speak to you or you just remember and you just begin to thank God for his goodness and how it changes your attitude. Yep. It doesn't necessarily change the circumstances, but it changes your heart. And God is always after our hearts. You know, it's not his desire that we go through horrible things and stuff. But through suffering, I, I really believe this. I believe that I grow more in the Lord through the difficult times and the trials that I go through than through the good times. And I, I love the good times. I pray for them. I hope they keep coming in, uh, in abundance. But I really have those times when I grow when I'm really struggling. Uh, and so I want to encourage you that some of you, I would just ask, how many of you are just kind of in a difficult season right now? Some of you are, some of you aren't, okay? Um, the last week, month and a half really for me has been a real, real struggle. This summer has been a struggle for Laney and I both. It hasn't been a bad season but it's been a very difficult season. And in the last month and a half, I really began to struggle with just discouragement and hopelessness and, and you know, a bunch of self-centered stuff as well because that always just comes right in with the trouble, right? As if self-pity wants to jump on top of you. And so uh, I was just really struggling with that and I began to just cry out to God. And, and that was the first thing that he reminded me was be grateful in difficult times, you know, and, and that changed my heart some, but, you know, we were dealing with, uh, I'll just be honest with some of the circumstances, you know, I think the election, I was really kind of surprised that it turned out the way that it did, and what broke my heart was what our nation values right now, uh, and, you know, sanctity of life was on the on the ballot in a big, big way. And, and a lot of other things. I'm not getting into political stuff. But I just, that was one of the things that really brought a lot of discouragement. And it was, it was kind of a hopelessness. I was like, man, we've been pressing in, we've been praying, we're believing for God to move. And it's really easy to allow those things to come and begin to steal from us. 
Lainey obviously broke her wrist really badly and it was at a really difficult time. And then she went to the hospital and ER and got COVID and came home and brought it. I got COVID and then I was trying to take care of her and take care of me. And it was just, you know, the last week and a half was just sort of, it was just so, it just felt dark and it just didn't feel right. But in, this, in the midst of all of that, um, I just kept going to the Word, and, and I just kept praying, and I just kept being thankful for the things that God has done for us. And I told her, Lady's going to have surgery Tuesday, and we're, you know, actually, it, probably her recovery will be faster now than if she hadn't had surgery. Um, and so I just want to encourage you, we all go through difficult times. Sometimes they're major things, you know, I've been through lots of surgeries, lots of broken legs, and heart attacks, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and all of us have. But how do you deal with that? How do you, what's your process when the, the world starts falling apart around you? What, what do you do? And so I want to go on because the writer of Hebrews just kind of gives us a little bit of a, uh, a picture of that. I want to go back and just read. You suffer with those who are thrown in jail. When all you owned was taken away from you, accepted it with joy, you knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So one of the big, one of the first things is I always try to remember what my eternal destiny looks like. That nothing in this world can change my destiny in Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Okay, I mean, you need to realize nothing that happens in this world when you accept Christ when you're a born-again believer and you have that personal relationship, you have eternal life with Jesus Christ. You have eternal life in heaven with the Father. We have eternal life together as the body of Christ. And so I always try to remind people that's the big picture. And so sometimes when the things that are happening here on earth, they, they look dark and they're discouraging, whatever, remind yourself, just like the writer of Hebrews is, we know there's better things coming. And we need to encourage each other with that, right? All right? All right. This is audience participation time. <laughs> Verse 35. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward that it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now. Well, I, I was reading this last week, and it was just, it was so real to me because I was experiencing these things, you know, real time, and I was reading that word, and it was just washing over me, and it was such an encouragement. It was like, hey, patient endurance is what you need right now. You need to press in. You need to stand strong. The word says, you know, when we're putting on the whole armor of God, he says, when you've done everything to stand, then stand firm. Right? Be immovable on your foundation of Christ, not on the circumstances. Anyway, he goes on and he says, so that you will continue to do God's will, then you will receive all that he has promised. Do you ever notice how the enemy loves to try to come in when we, when we have discouraging things and we have hurts and whatever, you know, life happens? is really what the enemy's trying to do is he's trying to distract you from what God has for you. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And so when the difficult times begin to come, that's also the time to start looking around for supernatural provision, looking around for divine encounters with people that can change their lives and change your life. Yeah. It's because when we are weak, we are strong in him. And, and that's really, really such a huge deal. You know, when Josh was, was um, dying with anorexia, and, and he was literally just about, his organs were about to shut down. And I can remember that constant battle going on day after day after day. The lie was he's going to die, right? And so that would come into my mind all the time. And that scripture would come to my mind. That's, I would turn to that. I would cry out to that truth. Because the lie was he's going to die. The truth was God had a plan and a destiny for his life. Just like he did for James and just like he does for each and every one of us. Um, 
But what I had to do is I had to recognize, I, I would quote that scripture and I would just say, God, when you are weak, or when I am weak, you are strong. That's actually not what it says, but what that, it says when I am weak, I am strong in you or through you. But what it did is it helped me refocus my mind on the Lord and on his strength and on his promises. So I took my eyes off the lie and I put them on the truth. And that's, I really think that's, that's a lot of what we need to be encouraging other people in right now is as we're walking alongside people, our loved ones, our friends, our family, our neighbors, whatever, we want to encourage them to keep their eyes on the truth and not on the lie. Because the enemy is always trying to get you to look at the lie, take your eyes off of the Lord, and when you do, then you become ineffective. And so a lot of the battle right now, we're here on earth to learn how to be warriors and how to rule and reign with Christ. And the battle is really learning how to overcome through his strength in the midst of trials and tribulations. Amen? Amen. Verse 37. For, just in, for in just a little while, the coming, will, will, coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But then he ends it with this, but we are not those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls are being saved. Mm -hmm. God says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Greater is he that lives in me than who lives in the world, that lives in you that lives in the world. That he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Yes. That if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That we're seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus now. Yes. That he's equipped, he's, he's uh, sorry, I can't think of it. He's equipped us with every spirit, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. Amen. And so those are the promises we need to be able to encourage and equip each other with. Those are the ones, that's why we memorize scripture, right? If we learn it is so in these times, we can begin to call those truths forth and not allow those lies to come and steal our thoughts and our peace. Hebrews, in, in the earlier, we've talked a lot about this in the series, but I think in verse in chapter 3, he starts talking about it. It says, today, if you hear God's voice, uh, don't harden your heart, right? Um, and he says there's a rest that we can enter into. There's a promised rest for those of us in Christ. And we can choose that rest every door, day, or we can choose to walk outside of that rest. But it's a, it's a choice that we have to make. And I, I think of 2 Corinthians 10, and it talks about the weapons that we have. When we're, in, when we're in these battles, we have spiritual weapons, right? The Bible says they're not carnal weapons. They're not weapons, earthly weapons. They're mighty weapons through God, you know, and they tear down strongholds and cast out imaginations. They bring down all those um, demonic high places, you know. And he says we do all of this. We overcome by taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So when we're in the midst of these trials and these hard times, and, and really this season wasn't very long. Uh, and I've really seen, you know, I really feel like we're moving out of this. We're really excited that Laney's going to get this surgery. And some of the other things I was dealing with here at the church and, and personally, I just see God's faithfulness in it. So it hasn't been a long season. Um, but it could have been a long season, depending on how I responded. We're called to respond in love. Jesus always responded in love, right? We're not called to react in fear. And reactions, remember, you've heard this a lot, but if I took a ball and threw it at Mark, and he would, I know Mark, he's got really fast reactions. He would react. And sometimes I do that in counseling, it just hits the person and they look at it. <laughs> <laughs> reactions mean you don't have to think about it, right? Driving down the road, deer steps in front of you, you don't have to think about it. You already have the process, you already know what to do. I'm going to slow down, I'm going to make sure I don't run over the deer. All right? Well, that's good news when we're driving or skiing or those sorts of things. But in relationships, in life, Reactions mean we don't think about it and we just react. 
and it gets us in trouble every time because it opens those doors because we're focusing on the wrong thing. And God says, you respond in love. You step back. You think things through. You think about the truth of the situation. Right? I mean, that's what I had to do over the especially the last couple of weeks was just think about, you know what, God? Here's what your word says. Here's the truth. I know you're going to work this out. You're just not working it out in my timing in the way that I think you should. And so I told you when we started this, it kind of comes back to a root of unbelief. If you think about it, it's like the battle I was having wasn't that I didn't really think God would work it out. I mean, I knew he would, but the unbelief was, was simmering under there to tell me it's all going to fall apart. It all depends on you. You got to carry all this, and and it just starts to wear us out. I, I can't remember in the Old Testament somewhere it talks about the enemy. He just constantly. You may remember that wearing the saints Daniel. out. When is it? Where is in it? Daniel. Daniel. He yeah. Wears out the saints. Yeah, he's he's, he's wearing down or trying to wear out the saints, and so we don't have to respond that way. It's okay. Right. We have to come alongside each other. We have to be willing to share, hey, I'm in a difficult season and I need help. I mean, if you try to do it on your own, good luck. I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, I, I got a hold of a couple of people I trust and said, I need some prayer. I need some help right now. You know, get around positive people. Get around people that are going to speak truth and encourage you. Oh, look, I have a text. <laughs> I love it. I want to wrap up over in chapter 11. Verse 1 of chapter 11 in Hebrew says this, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a great reputation. By faith, <coughs> excuse me, understand the entire universe was formed at God's command that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel was long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. Before he was taken up, he was known as the person who pleased God. And then verse 6, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone, this, this was probably as big a help to me during this difficult, this short little difficult time that I went through um, as anything Anyone who wants to come to him, to Jesus, must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So there's a great truth in there. <clears throat> in the midst of the struggles, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the hurt and the pain, God will reward those that will diligently seek him. We believe, we know we believe he's real. We know he's true, right? Right? But when we diligently seek him in the midst of trials, because all the people that he's naming, these great, the great hall of faith, right? These are all people that overcame unbelievable things that they couldn't have done on their own. They were supernatural. Our God is a supernatural God. Amen? Amen. All right, I want to wrap it up with this. I want to go over to John 16. The interesting thing about this is there was a note that I wrote down and I don't know what it said. <laughs> so let's see what John 16 starting in verse 19 says. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about, about it. So he's talking to the disciples um, and he was telling them, you know, he was speaking in parables and stuff. And he said, so you're asking yourselves what I meant 
I said, in a little while, you won't see me. But in a little while after that, you will see me again. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over all that is going to happen to me. But the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but suddenly, your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When the child is born, the anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you will have sorrow now. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples, but he's speaking to us. But I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. Amen. Somebody ought to be excited Amen. about that. I mean, I, this week when I was reading those things, I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, I'm allowing someone to rob, not someone, but situations to rob me of a joy that God says, joy is not an emotion. You know, they said that this morning, talking about we want to live in our feelings, right? Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. Those are all things that are guaranteed. They grow and they mature in us. <coughs> and then Jesus says this. Verse 23, at that time you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly. Do you understand that we have the authority in Christ now that goes directly to the throne of grace? We don't have to go through a high priest. We don't have to go through, you know, a bunch of sacrifices and a bunch of... We have access to the throne of grace when we need it. We have a Father that's compassionate, that loves us. He... He blesses because he loves us. We talked about this a few weeks ago. He heals us because he loves us. He provides for us because he loves us, not because of what we do. So when we, we go through these difficult times and we go through struggles, whether they're small or big, if we just walk in faith and keep our eyes on him, we're grateful and thankful. God says, I promise you, I'm going to take everything in your life and I will turn it to good for those that love me and are called according to my purposes. And so it doesn't mean the thing is good. It doesn't mean the situation is good. But he says, I'll take that circumstance. And what you, how you learn and grow and respond to that, he says, I'll turn that to good and I'll use that to touch other people. So my, that's my encouragement today is that in the midst of trials, whether you're in one now or if you're going to end up being in one down the road, we have a faithful God and we have a faithful intercessor in Jesus that's sitting at the right hand, interceding for each and every one of us, regardless of what's taking place. Our response is to respond in love, to forgive, to walk in faith, right? When we do that, then we carry a light out into the world around us, <clears throat> a hope that no one else can explain. And I've watched Lainey do this through her the situation with the wrist, you know, and it's really bad, and she's concerned because it's really deformed right now. And, but when she talks to people, there's a hope, there's a there's a trust. When she's talking to, to people out in the in the world, she's like, I know God's going to take care of this because I'm His favorite. Yes. Or actually, I'm his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're his favorite, or maybe, yeah. May I, may I read a poem? What's that? May I read a poem? Sure. If you read it loud. I, I like poems. <laughs> God blesses me with poems all the time. And I just, um, I told Seth I always get very nervous when I read them. But I told him, there's a, if when I think I'm supposed to read, something, there's always something that's said that confirms it, and you've confirmed it about five Amen. times. So, here you go. Why don't you step over here in the middle so that everybody can hear you. Let's put you out in front of everybody. Welcome to my world, girl. <laughs> it's called we Reframe. Let's see if I can get light. Situations that come my way often determine the outcome of my day. What I perceive as I go along can alter the melody of my song. Lord, help me. Lord, please help me to identify 
the thoughts that steal my joy and life. Give me the strength to dismiss and refrain events that lead me to vent or blame. It is fully within my power to choose, to examine my joy supply, do I gain or lose. Help me to hold on to the joy that you give, to fully experience abundant life and live. Lead me to ways that alleviate stress, to reframe how I interpret this world's mess. Lord, open my eyes that I may see that no one can diminish this joy but me. I can choose to hold on to negativity with its downward pull of gravity, or I can call upon your powerful name to identify negative thoughts and reframe. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Last one, John 15, 11, I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Amen. 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 So what do we walk away with this morning is, first of all, if you're in a difficult season, we want to pray for you today. I, I, we're a local body. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of restaurants open, so you, know, you may have to go home. And their mind will be open. They'll, have, they'll, they'll get us some food. But we want to pray for each other. But I also, I encourage you, we just, our family has just been kind of experimenting with this for a while and just asking God to give us divine appointments throughout the day. Um, I told you how Josh is, you know, he was, he's been a prodigal for a while. And he's really beginning to, to cry out to God and he's really beginning to, to seek his face. And we're seeing him, he, he asked, and I think I might have shared this last week, I can't remember. Uh, did I? Yes. He, he asked one morning he got up and he said, just give me an encounter. You know, I've, we've been in, encouraging him to do that. And so he said, give me a divine encounter with someone. And a lady, he pulled up, and he was eating lunch, and he saw this lady, and, and the Lord was like, I want you to go talk to her. And he was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So he went to the bathroom. <laughs> and in the bathroom he said, now, Lord, if you really want me to talk to her, then put her in my bath. So he walked out of the bathroom and there she stood. <laughs> so he went back to his car <laughs> and he said, now God, if you really want me to come back, then have her come back outside. And she did. <laughs> and so how many of you have been down that road, right? I mean, it's like God tells you to do something, you're like, uh, are you sure? <laughs> anyway, long story short, he was able to, he went over there and you know, he was kind of nervous and he was just like, you know, hi, and, and the lady began to respond and, and she was deaf and she had some, some other issues and she just had this beautiful smile and he just said, I just want to tell you that your smile just made my day today. You just have such a great countenance. And this lady just lit up and she, you know, and they had a conversation. But we carry the presence of God with us. We have the ability, when Lord highlights somebody, go and act on it. If you see someone that looks discouraged, we have the truth, right? If we're, we're struggling, one, you know, if in the body, we should be here for one another. It's Thanksgiving, right? We should really, really be grateful this week. I challenge you, think about the things you're grateful for. Thank you. James and A are grateful for a new dog. <laughs> can drink water out of the sink. <laughs> oh. It's a big dog. <laughs> Just be grateful. <clears throat> Joyful. So if you need prayer this morning, here's what we want to do. We're going to end it just a little different today. Is If you're struggling and just maybe in one of those seasons, just raise your hand. I just want the people around you to just gather around and just pray for a minute. We're not, 
we'll have the altar open. Lydia's, she definitely needs some prayer, so some people just gather around her. And that's how we're going to close today, okay? Who else needs prayer? We're going to pray over Ben for sure. People want to gather around him. Anybody else? I saw some hands earlier. Come on, don't be shy. Put your hand up if you want prayer. It's a house of prayer, right? That's what we're called to do. We don't have any power today, so or electricity, so we got power. Now, lots of power, there's not any electricity. And I'm just gonna, as they're praying, you guys, I'm just gonna just speak a blessing over you and dismiss you. But Father, we thank you for your goodness. I declare blessing over each and every person that's here today. We go forth in the name of Jesus. We go forth in joy and in love. And we pray covering and blessing in Jesus. Amen.